Well, you have to drive to a little town called Blacks Harbor, which is the, the base of uh, New Brunswick, and then you catch a ferry and the boat rides an hour and a half, so we're pretty remote. People don't come here to lay out on beaches. There are no Walmarts, there are no Neon, there are no pubs, and people ask, well, you know, why? Why do you want to live there? And the answer is, well, you know, the people mainly. Morning. You guys want some sandwiches? My father is a fisherman, and my grandfather's a fisherman, my uncle's a fisherman, my brother's a fisherman, <laughs> my whole family. Our whole life revolves around the weather and the tide and lobsters. <laughs> Today is uh, the setting of the lobster traps. It happens the, the second Tuesday in November. This is the biggest day of the year for a grand man. And everybody's got the jitters and a lot of people depend on this day. You gotta have good weather to get your traps in the water and this is gonna be a good day, so. We're just going to see a lot of people and a lot of boats moving around, getting ready for 7 o'clock until they let us go. Well, at least until they get the traps set. It's, um, it's very stressful because the boats are loaded high. There are a lot of crew on. There are a lot of inexperienced people. And if the weather isn't good, it can be dangerous. Years ago, there was a lot more uh, fishery uh, related activity, certainly in herring and ground fish. Um, but today, it's lobster is the last stronghold. If and when that crashes, then life as we know it will certainly be in jeopardy. I think one of the things are, you know, is, is that we really enjoy life and, and we try to make the best of it. And when there is something to be done that, that has to be done, it gets done. There's Graham and Ann, then there's the mainland, and then there's the rest of Canada. But certainly a rink does bring us all together. Before there was this complex, there were ponds and bourgeois, uh, romp through the woods, through the alders to find a, a pond, scrape the pond, and then play hockey. Before the arena, in the winter, there wasn't a lot to do on the island, um, for the, especially for the age range that this arena affects. It's a huge boost for the community because you, you have kids skating with their parents who are skating with their grandparents. It would almost bring tears to your eyes to be here on the first day of public skating. Children anywhere from two to three years old to Smiles Green, who was 97 or 98 years old. This idea came about from the 30s. It's always been an idea on Grand Anne. Maybe it's just the planets aligning. We had the interest, we had the infrastructure money, we had the program. People just reaching out left, right, and center to help us out, to get us started. It, it's just been unbelievable, the support. Chris Rayner, he is the um, president of our Minor Hockey Association, and accepted an award on behalf of the arena and kind of told the story of how we started from nothing and how many years we've been trying to get an arena on the island. And Hockey New Brunswick loved the story. Hockey Canada loved the story. Submitted it to Mars and Mars chose us. Donated the money to build a heated mezzanine. It's colder than most rinks because it's not in-floor cooling, it's top-down cooling. So the heated mezzanine gives everybody the opportunity to come in and watch, watch the kids and enjoy themselves. <laughs> when you're five years old today, and you're starting to play hockey here, Who knows where that kid may go. We could have the next Sidney Crosby. You never know. At least now, 
to have a chance to see if we do.